Hey y'all, it's Andrea here at VW Family Farm. Welcome back to our channel. We're so excited to have you guys here. We're out today. We are working some cows. It is breeding time here in the South for our cattle herd. Uh, it's, a, it's when a lot of people put their bulls in. Uh, they've already been putting bulls in with cows for the last couple months. That way, the way a cow's gestation calendar works out, if you put them in a couple months ago, you could be having calves as early as February and March. And now here we are, we're putting ours in in July. Uh, we don't actually have a bull for all of our cows. We like to keep a bull for like every 20 cows. We don't have that many bulls right now. So we're shuffling some around. We showed you last week, we have got Bruce, which is the name of the new South Pole bull that we bought. And then we've got B18, which is our big black Sam Angus bull that we bought last year. We've got those in with the beef herd at our house. But we also have a couple of smaller herds um, across and down the road a little ways. Uh, we're trying to rotationally graze all of our property and keep little herds on all our different little mini farms that we are trying to graze. And so we don't have bulls for all of those. So what we are doing is some swapping. Uh, you can see back here behind me, maybe, right down there coming this way, that is Iron Man. He has been here at this herd of cows for a couple months, um, six to eight weeks. And so it is time for him to move over to the other herd of cows that we have over here. And he'll stay there six or eight weeks. Um, a lot of people leave their bulls in exactly 42 days. So cows come into heat every 21 days. They have uh, their shortest interval called estrus is the 24 hours when they are most fertile. And that occurs, like I said, every 21 days. So worst case scenario, if you put your bulls in for 42 days, uh, let's say worst case scenario, you just missed their heat and they just came out of it. So three weeks into that of you having your bull in there, they're gonna come in heat. And three weeks later at the six week mark, they're gonna come back into heat. So if you leave them 42 days, you're guaranteed two heat cycles. So if the bull misses them the first cycle, they there's another chance there that they could get bred. So this dude right here is about to get loaded up and he's going down the road with some new ladies. Uh, we bought him actually last year too. Uh, he is gentle as a puppy dog. I love this bull just because his disposition, I'm not afraid of him. He's an easy keeper and I don't have to be afraid that he's gonna try to run me over every few minutes. You can see the whole herd is coming up to say hello. I'm gonna count these while we're over here and we're gonna see if we can't get them running the crowd and get Iron Man moved on down the road. But before we can do that, you can see Ben and the kids out there with the tractor. Uh, the, the other day, let me show you what happened. So when we were over here, the kids and I before trying to load a bull, the bull decided he was coming back out this little short gate and he took part of the post with him. So we're over here, Ben is taking off the gate hangers. We are hoping, hoping that this is going to pull up and we can drop another one in the same hole without too much manual labor. Do I need to get something else that help dig this out? Uh, yeah, bring, bring a claw hammer and they'll be. Claw hammer, gate hanger. You need like a, we have like a little hand auger or something. All right, so what's happened, Ben? I guess when the bull pushed into it, he broke it right there at ground level, which that's where most of them rot off at. Yeah. But it's still, and a lot of it down in the ground was rotten, but it's still got some hard pieces in here that I can't, I can't get out with the post hole diggers. I'm having to break them out. All these pieces right here, they're in there good. There's one there and one over here. It was a square. Trying to get the rest of it out. Yeah, railroads. Timber. It's every time I hit it with a post hole diggers, they get stuck. But it's rotten in the middle. So while we were at the house, the kids and I loaded up an old pole that we had come by that'll be perfect for a fence post in there. So we're trying to get that replaced so that then we can get these cows ran up in the corral, sort it out, and take Iron Man to the next pasture down the road. So 
what determines when we put bulls in? Well, we've been putting bulls in mid-May for the last few years. And so that means that you're gonna start calving if they're bred the day you put them in mid-May, you're gonna start calving mid to late February, around February 21st. And for the past few years, that's worked out pretty well for us. That's been our schedule. That's when a lot of people put bulls in um, and you start having calves as early in the spring as you can. So they can eat those spring and summer grasses until fall and then you sell them. But the longer we're raising cows, the more we're learning. We've been to some conferences. We're trying to just really educate ourselves on why are we doing what we're doing. And that's a good lesson with anything you're raising, gardening, animals, anything in life, is just questioning why are we doing it this way? And if that proves to be the best way, more power to you. But if not, just keeping an open mind that there could possibly be a better way. So we actually attended a grazing lands conference last year, which was awesome. I encourage you, if you have a grazing lands and grasslands coalition in your state, hook up with them and start attending some of their stuff because they are really forward thinking on um, rotating. You know, you guys know we're real big on electric fencing and rotating our cows and not just putting up a permanent barbed wire fence and just throwing them out there for the rest of their life. There is just proven to be a better way. And if that's the only choice you have, I, I still encourage you to raise animals. But uh, if you have the land to rotate, even a small acreage, rotating is better. And so we learned so much at that conference. And one of the things was, uh, one of the guys said, he never puts his bulls in until July 4th. And we we're like, what? That's crazy to us. That's six weeks. We've lost six weeks that we could have had a calf earlier in the year and gaining weight and, and making a profit and all that. But his reasonings and his facts to back it up were so solid that he sold us on it. And so we're giving it a try this year. So here's the reasons we're gonna do that. Number one reason is if we wait until July 4th, which we did to put bulls in, we're already rotating some bulls around now. If we wait until July 4th, we will not have calves before mid-April. And so why would we wanna do that? Well, there's a couple reasons. In the spring, Arkansas tends, and I'm, I'm sorry, they're working on the corral in the background, but in the spring, Arkansas tends to be very wet. In fact, flooding wet. Next thing is, even on into February and March, we can be having some pretty cold temperatures. Definitely freezing, freezing nights. We can have snow and sleet storms and all that. We can still be having major winter weather. Sometimes that's when the majority of our winter weather comes is late winter. So by pushing calving season back a little bit, we are avoiding all of those things. The third reason we are choosing to do this is because the cows will be in better shape at the time that they deliver their calf. It will be more than likely April or further before they deliver as we were doing it before and they were starting to deliver in February there was no grass around they were definitely still on hay and supplements and things like that and now they will be on fresh spring grasses they will have gained back some of their weight because cows will slim down in the winter they'll have an overall better body condition uh, the calves will have a better chance of survival not being born in harsh weather conditions they'll be born on fresh spring grass instead of a muddy uh, cold ground also the cows should have better milk because more to eat fresh spring grass being, brings lots more rich fresh milk for the calf to drink so all around it should be a much better scenario one last thing i wanted to say about this though is it's a little bit of a risky move because if you think about it we've pushed our calving season a little bit it's not going to be real easy to back it back up if you think about it we're gonna we can't get them bred a whole lot sooner next year and go back to uh spring which people call it spring calving but it's really still winter here they're calling it early spring but it's really still winter and it's not going to be easy for us to back up to that instead we would have to push it forward and try to get back to that february calving but i don't foresee us wanting to do that i think this is going to work out much much better for us uh, just for all the reasons i've mentioned to you guys so go along on this journey with us let's see how this turns out it'll be next spring before we find out but uh we're all in this together
All right, this is an old uh, drill hand auger. It was my grandpa's, what he always used to uh, auger in gate hooks. And I still use it today some 30, 40 years later, and it still works awesome. All right, before you hang a gate, you always want to pick it up and put it up, up on the post where it's going to hang and kind of mark where you know you want your first hanger. I'm going to go ahead and put a line there. And these things, they dig good. Pull some of that out. Clean your threads off. This thing right here is made to swivel, and so is this. So all you gotta do is put back, put some pressure on the back side, and just go round and round. That was a whole lot harder than I thought. Already broke out in a sweat again. Got a little muddy. <laughs> you gotta love what you're doing. That's for sure. And, do you love it? And we love it. We love it. We, we love, love it. this life. You gotta love it to do it, though. All right, ready to move some cows? We're gonna go get them, but we're going back old school. No, I guess it ain't old school, is it? New school from way back when. We done a video several months ago where we was herding up all of our cows and we've used uh, hot wires, we've used everything. Well, this time we tried a drone and the drone worked amazing. We've got a wide open field. We're gonna go push them all up with the drone. I'm gonna be behind them just filming a little bit from behind Let's see how this goes. Come on, girls. Go. Crowd in on them, Lane. Yeah, we're gonna get all the cows and calves out of here, but not the black white faced bull. Come on, Cass. So these calves earlier cut off from the rest of the herd um, down a separate road which is also gated but they're just away from their mom so they're wanting back with them 
So Lane's just running them up and we're putting them back in here. All right, we brought the other Jersey bull we loaded up here to the house for my milk cows. We actually have two Jersey bulls. We have this guy and this guy. This is actually a pole, uh, guaranteed to throw pole calves. He's that dark chocolate color. And then we've got this one, looks like pretty much a standard Jersey. Don't know yet which one we're gonna keep. We've been tossing that around, but they are about to fight. Well, they may actually be all bark and no bite, but we have wrapped this job up. The bull that we put in, Iron Man, over across the road, he's the last bull to go in with cows, and then we've had all of our cows exposed to bulls, and so our breeding season will be coming to an end after that, and hopefully we will have lots, lots of calves, because on a cattle farm, calves mean life. Calves mean um, that's your financial security, so I hope you learned something from this video. I try to make even when we're working cows informative. And so if you think these videos would help someone else, please share them. Uh, we thank you for being here. Please subscribe if you haven't. We'd love to have you stick around. And we will see you guys on the next one. God bless.